I'm delighted to be here. And uh, Minister and Gabby, let me just add my thank you to quite compelling and, and encouraging things that you had to say for us this morning. My brother works for HP and he's always describing various technological breakthroughs like 3D printers and I just don't get it. But I, but I do know that innovation is the key and the solution to so much of what we talk about. Um, American Accent, running an organization based in the UK, all rather complicated, bilingual like so many in this room. I speak English and American. Um, and for those Americans who live in England, you'll know what I mean. It, there is a difference. I, I'm the chief executive of Stefan Set, a business in the community, a, a good friend, a good partner, a good collaborator with, with CSR Europe. But I spent most of my working life running companies, global businesses, um, big complex businesses, but, but, but also uh, businesses that make things practical, manufacturing operations around the world. And so I've been in the, the shoes of many in this room when it comes to the challenges of bringing these agendas to life. What are we talking about? What are we actually trying to do here? What is that role that business and good stewardship can play? We heard a wonderful example of what stewardship in the Swedish context can and should be. Why don't we see that happening more places? Uh, challenging. Now, every speaker that today has talked about the complexity of the environment in which we're operating, economically, politically, socially, you name it. Certainly in the UK, uh, I think in the United States, perhaps everywhere, the issue of trust is, is a, a big one as well. People don't trust business. They don't, certainly don't trust financial institutions. They're not sure if they trust the government. In some places, they're not even sure they trust the church. And that makes the work that we all do all that much more complicated, isn't it? The headlines in the newspapers in the UK, don't know what they're like where you live. They're all about executive pay, uh, who's paying or who isn't paying taxes, as it were, but also about the rising gap between the rich and the poor, uh, about the equality of opportunity for young people coming through the system, issues that are really very important and right at the heart of what it is that we're talking about. When I listen to companies, the companies here today, the other companies that I get to talk to in my work and travels around, I hear some pretty consistent refrains. I hear companies say that they're doing quite a bit, they're actually quite proud of what they're doing. When you push and probe a little bit, they can concede, uh, mostly willingly, that there's an awful lot more that they can and should do. They are beginning to realize that this is part of value creation, as everyone has said today. This isn't some add-on, this isn't... PR, this isn't some supplemental activity. It really is part of the value creation model of an organization, creating value by living your values. We, we believe that or we wouldn't be in this room today. There are some out there that perhaps don't share that view with us yet, and we have to, to work on that. But what the companies also say to me is, why I'd like to do more, and I know in these difficult times and times of government fiscal austerity, there's an opportunity, a challenge, maybe a necessity for me to step up in a different way in my own business, it's complicated. I've got all these conflicting priorities. Uh, I don't know where to begin. My customers won't pay for it. My bankers don't ask me about it. My shareholders don't do this. The governments that I supply don't ask me about this in their supply contracts. So it's challenging to bring that agenda to life. And so I think part of what I'm hoping has come out of all of the sessions today, certainly those that I've been involved in, are the notion that we need to be practical in helping Governments and nonprofits and businesses alike realize that being responsible isn't about philanthropy, as good as that is. It's about how you go about your daily business. And every organization in the room needs to think about how it treats the planet, how it creates healthy, inclusive, diverse workplaces, uh, how you engage in the communities around the issues that, that the minister and Gabby were just talking about, education, employment, enterprise, things that really will make our economies and our communities vibrant and safe and healthy places. Um, We've got um, our annual meeting next week, which is always fun. We've got about 700 people gathered, and we are challenging them on a number of fronts, talking about what local community involvement looks like, but also recognizing that notwithstanding all the rhetoric, notwithstanding everything that we hear from businesses in terms of what they're worried about for their long-term success, the sense that the whole sustainability agenda is sliding just a little bit down the agenda. It's not quite as important because we've got these short-term economic pressures or whatever. So we're, we're trying to spend some real energy making sure that this stays at the top of everyone's agenda. One of the ways that we know that we do that is through awards. And so we're delighted to be working with CSR Europe uh, on the European-wide CSR awards. How do we challenge and encourage and excite companies in that way to really make all of this happen? And there'll be more about that in the future. Now, in our session, uh, just to supplement on a few of the things that were said, and the idea was what does and should good cooperation look like between uh, CSR bodies, organizations like many represented in this room, and government? 
both national, local, and international government. What does it mean and how do you do it? Is it, is it simply a financial exchange? Is it simply about some asking money from others? Well, perhaps there's some of that there, but, but realistically in the environment where in what everybody is saying it needs to be so much more. It was, as I shared with that group, a really encouraging session because I heard some wonderful examples of what good collaboration could look like. Shared agendas, shared passions, a realization that the difficult times that we're in really forces us to think a bit differently and creatively about how we approach these relationships. Not simply changing what we ask, but how we work together, how we support and help one another. We had some very practical examples discussed about what it is that we need as CSR organizations to ask of government, particular practical things, how they can support things they should do in their own behavior and their own procurement practices, dealing with leg regulatory issues, things like that, but also the recognition that we had to provide practical help as well to that. How do we help government bodies become responsible and tackle the same issues that we're talking to our businesses about? How do we use our convening power and our, our access into businesses, particularly bigger businesses in these countries who have such an important role to play? How do we bring those people to the table to help governments think about what they do? And how do we make sure that the net result of all of this is each side wins because that's what good collaboration looks like. There are themes that have run through all of this. The, the frustration that governments keep changing, ministerial roles keep being passed around, and that seems to happen in every country. Uh, and it's difficult because you're having to start over all the time. Uh, the, the challenge that we have of bringing this agenda to life with small companies. In every nation in this world, most people work for SMEs, not the big companies. And yet, the dialogue we seem to have is with the big guys. And how do we make sure that the tools and the ideas and the things that we're developing actually have applicability to every business? And how do we help have government help us amplify that message to the small companies through policy and through other things, and particularly through their own procurement practices. The UK government is rolling something out in the new year. I know many governments around Europe are looking or are doing the same thing. How do we, like Sweden has talked to us today about how do we make sure that this isn't simply talk, but governments and businesses are behaving in the same way as they think about how they procure themselves, and it isn't just about those the last few pennies that they can squeeze out of all of us. Now, just, just kind of a final thought for me and then I'll hand back to Stefan. It is a question we should ask ourselves, I think, regularly, uh, which is, does this matter? Are we, are we actually making any progress here? Are we, are we busy giving one another awards and clapping one another on the back and talking about all these great things and talk, talk, talk? Is there any real action happening on the ground out there? Well. There is an awful lot of talk, we know, but there is an awful lot of positive stuff happening. We hope the CSR awards that we're all collectively involved in will tease those out, will challenge and inspire others to be the, the pebble in the shoe, if you will, for some of those companies. It's really exciting. I think it is real. When we think about success, certainly within business and the community, when we talk about what success looks like to us, success in our communities, we aren't talking about house prices or share prices. We're talking about the, the character, the opportunities of the people that live there, men and women who, who work hard and, and dream big, who love their families and serve their neighbors, who have been given the chance to innovate and be creative and unlock their own talent and skills and, and give other people. That's the kind of thing that really makes all this successful. And that's where this collaboration that we talked about in the White Room, wherever that was, over there, but I, hopefully in the wider sessions today has been all about. I think the work that we're doing collectively has never been more important. So uh, well done, Stefan and team here, for bringing us all together and keeping this alive. So thank you very much.